what up y'all today we're going to do a little shadow of the earth tree tier list for all the bosses i beat the game fairly recently and i had a blast playing it so i thought why not rank all the boss fights and what i thought to be the most fun what i thought to be the most engaged and entertaining what i thought they did very well just you know kind of slot them where i think they need to be so without further ado let's go ahead and get right on into it we're starting out with ancient dragon man now i do remember fighting this guy a little bit i remember beating him like fairly easy he wasn't really that tough of a fight he was like slotted between that section where you uh get to like the area where the dragons are i can't remember the name of the location that well but i think that his fight was all right i kind of beat him in like five hits or something like that it was like two jump attacks and then like uh my three slashes with like the magma sword uh the next is ancient dragon synax 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 <laughs> but <laughs> for the most part this dragon in particular i believe that is kind of like a carbon copy of uh it's two dragons it's the one that's in front of like the royal capital in the base game as well as uh the lich lord uh dragon fight um this fight in particular was a little bit difficult and i think the only reason why it was difficult to me was because i couldn't lock on to the lower body but as i think about most of the dragon fights in this game there were very few that you could lock on to the body unless they were like repeatable dragons but for the most part, I stayed on the back of my beautiful, lovely B. Young. Some of y'all call him Torrent. I call him B. Young. That's my horse from Young B. And uh, yeah. So for this one, I think it was it needed work. In all honesty, it wasn't really a fun boss fight. It wasn't challenging. It was just kind of there. It was it was just there to let you know what you might get into if you fought against Bell. Now the Bell boss fight, right? Thematically spectacular great great especially if you're doing like the side quest with egon great right you know bell curse you bell you know all of that right solid um as for the fight itself i do think that the health pool that he had was was like mad large the fight in itself i don't think was as fun as like fighting against um I think it's Dragon Lord uh, Placido Sax. Because I still think that's the best dragon fight I've played in a FromSoft game. I know most people say Midir from uh, Dark Souls 3. But I think Placido Sax is like a better fight. Um, so I will probably put Bill in boxing. Like a nice little fight. He got a nice few moves to like open him up and all that. But uh, chasing him down a lot is, 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 is a big issue with me. Um, as for Black Knight Dread all right most of the black knights were just all right to me uh chief blood fiend was all right nothing special it was it was also something that again that i beat in very few hits because my shadow fragments were kind of high when i found them i think it was like level 12 so yeah uh commander gaius i actually really liked this boss fight it was a nice dance especially once you got used to certain things the only reason why I wouldn't have this fight in Goaded tier for me is, is, is just primarily because of the opening for the boss. And that's his charge attack when he's just coming at you. It's, the hitbox on that thing is kind of wonky and it requires like a level of precision that a lot of players don't have. Me being like, I guess, a little bit sketchy with my precision with it. Sometimes I would dodge it perfectly. Sometimes I wouldn't. Uh, depending on how uh, how I enter the fight, I guess would be the best way to put it. Um, but in a lot of cases, like the rest of the fight, is solid. All of his all of his attacks have amazing telegraphs, and on top of that, he has a bunch of attacks that prepare you for the final boss fight in the game, which is a is a good thing. You you want some of your bosses to lead up to that penultimate fight. Um, as for Count Ymir, Count Ymir was all right. This was another boss that I kind of beat in like five hits. Um, and in case anybody is wondering, I used like three different weapons in my playthrough. I used uh, the Magma Worm Sword, which is what I used throughout the majority of my Shadow of Earth Tree run. 
Um, and I also use the Great Sword of Damnation, which is the weapon that you get from uh, a Midra. Um, which, I'm not gonna lie, it helped me out a lot against the last boss fight, especially once I realized that he had a weakness to Pierce. Uh, but yeah, speaking on Ymir, it, it, the fight didn't last that long. It was kind of quick. Uh, I beat him like after the first time he summoned like a, a cluster of hands, which because my sword dealt fire damage, it took him out in one hit. And yeah, uh, Curse Blade Labyrinth was was all right. wasn't too much. Dancer Rana was all right. wasn't too much. Uh, kind of like a, a, a remix of the Dance of the Boreal Valley. Not necessarily anything too fancy, too great about it. Just normal. Um, old boy here, uh, the the black gold knight. I do remember like, uh, cause at the time the DLC came out, like I was incredibly sick. I had COVID for like about two, three weeks or something like that. And like, I'm still recovering from it because like some of my limbs are messed up right now. But I watched like a bunch of streamers play and like they was getting mop meat moved by this dude. When I went to fight him, I had like a shadow level of three and I I bodied him. Now, I'm not sure if like my sword had like his weakness or anything, but I would stagger him and like, I think four or five hits and then I just get out the way. Then I'll come back in, do the same thing. Then he'll drink that. I'll come back in and I just body him. So I don't know. It was a little odd. And these two guys, they pretty much operate like, um, like the like the old boys that have like the little wish cash not wish cash but like you know the little dragonite tail and and like the the wings and the stab down at the ground though that's how these two boys act, act one of them have like the little lick of tongue tongue and the other one i forgot what he had because this is the one that's like at that but well both of them are like at a little castle but i can't remember which castle each one of them was at um death knight first version was i nothing special uh in my opinion death knight version 2 was i nothing special uh death bird right and this is how i'm gonna judge each of these uh i guess re redos of each of these bosses whatever i would give them in the base is what i would give them and the dlc because nothing changed from the fight doesn't get any better or worse it's just the same thing so for me death uh death right bird buff is pretty good body that joint though beat the mess out of it with the uh <laughs> with my magma worm sword um demi human queen gurgus actually this was kind of like a remix of the boss that was on um that was in the base game that's that's close. I'm, I'm trying to remember the name of the area. Mount Glimmer, I think is the name of it. This boss is there like close by the dude that has the Comet Azure. So this boss is kind of like a, you know, just a uh, redo fight, except now there's a bunch of demi humans that's around it that could kind of make the fight more difficult. But for the most part, it's, 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 a, it's, it's, it's a fight, you know. You go up to it, you whack it a couple of times, it dies. Now this joint was like a boxer right here. Dibby Human Sword Master Unz. <laughs> Unz. Um, it was pretty dope. It moved around like Yoda, which I thought was pretty cool. It was it was it was it was fun to interact with. Um the Divine Lion. Which which one are we talked about? Because there's two of them. Cause there's one that's like in the ancient ruins of Ra, and then there's another one that's like that you fight in like its own Colosseum in its own dome. If we're going by the one that was in its own Colosseum in its own dome, love this fight. But granted, I also had a weapon that was his weakness, which was fire. Um, fire is this thing's main weakness. So it didn't take me long to beat him. I think it took me like two, three tries. Uh, Cause the first two tries I, I data collected, figured out what his moveset was, realized that there are a lot of attacks that you need to stay in on him on and then realize that his delays weren't as bad as like fighting against somebody like Mor uh, Morgan. Nah, after, <laughs> after I realized, oh, you're not as bad as I thought you could be. And I think I went in with like a shadow level of six. So he wasn't, he wasn't that difficult. 
bodied them, bodied them. Um, the fight in itself with the different attacks that he have, the the grab attack, uh, the the three pronged lunge that I like to call it, uh, <laughs> the rare attack I thought was pretty cool. I did the four different elements that they uh, that he uses. And on top of that, with each element having its own like breath based attack, which depending on which breath based, uh, I think Thunder is the only one that kind of shoots straight at you and he goes in a circle, whereas the other ones like he shoot down at the ground at an angle. But if you stay by him the entire time, it doesn't touch you. Um, so it was a, it was a really nice fight. It was really interesting. It, it required a lot of patience and it required you dictating the pace of the fight and also keeping the fight in the center. The second it leaves the center, it's wraps for you. Because at that point, he's dictating where you go. Uh, as for the Fallen Star Boss buff, say boxing, I, I like the move set of it. Uh, Fire Golem needs work. I didn't, I didn't like the fact that I was just sitting there beating on its legs while it did like a variation of three attack. It was kind of, yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, as for the dragons, both of them boxing. I enjoyed the ghost flame dragons. Um, I think they're really, they were really dope. Uh, especially the one that was, at, I believe it was like the lake. That joint was pretty dope. Uh, as for the hippo, the hippo was all right. I don't think the hippo was difficult. And I got out of that fight real quick, which was crazy to me. It didn't take as long as I thought it was going to take. I think it took me like five minutes to beat him. Um, Jack Peak, Dra uh, Drake boxing. I do, I do, I did like that dragon fight, especially like when the two dragons was fighting against each other. And I was just right there, my popcorn, just watching them duke it out with each other. It was like, all right, I'm gonna come get you when you're done. <laughs> uh, Lamenta, Lamenta was an interesting fight. I would say Lamenta was all right. It wasn't a difficult fight. What it was is like one of those old school from software style boss fights where it's a trick fight, which I thought was pretty cool. I thought that was pretty interesting because I haven't seen like a good from software uh, puzzle fight in a long time. Uh, and to explain it a little bit, the way the Lamenta works is that it throws out some of these shadow balls, right? And this is kind of like an MMO mechanic. This is a way to wipe like the raid. So he throws out these shadow balls. Now, if you get hit by the shadow ball, it'll, it'll put a counter around you, right? So after it puts the counter around you, I think it's a total of somewhere between seven to eight of these counters being put around you. It's instant death. So it, it was it was pretty dope. It made, I think I died to him like two times because of that, because I didn't understand the mechanic at first. And then once it clicked, I was just like, oh, don't get hit. <laughs> You know, uh, wipe out his shadows when they come in. Don't get hit. It was a, it was a pretty interesting fight. I won't say boxing because like, there wasn't really sort of any nuance to the science of, of the fight or anything. It was just more so dodge, boy, dodge. Mesmer, Mesmer is in goaded tier. <clears throat> Mesmer is an amazing fight. I would say Mesmer is probably close to being one of the best fights in the DLC. It's not my favorite fight, but it's one of the best fights in the DLC, especially with like the different move sets that Mesmer have, the different variations to those moves and how each, each defined move has two variations behind that move, which I thought was pretty solid. That it seemed like a very well-designed boss fight to every every attack that he throws out has a, a nice succinct pattern for you to be able to dodge to keep you into the fight so you feel the dance of the fight that bit of that tango and on top of that my weapon worked against him even though it was a fire weapon and i thought he would be resistant to fire it worked against him so i'm happy about that he could have easily not been weakened by my weapon. And I think I fought him with the same number of uh, shadow fragments that I fought Reliana with. Cause I think I went right to him or that I fought the golden hippo with. Cause the golden hippo is like right before him, yeah. So 
I thought that was pretty dope. I had a blast fighting against them. I, I, I wish I could go back and fight them again, but there's more games coming out that I want to play. And yeah, I got to I gotta move on. But that's an amazing fight. If they ever do what they did for Sekiro and create like a kind of like a boss training mode style thing with the uh, with Elden Ring, I definitely like boot the game back up specifically to fight against him again. Um, Metir, the mother of fingers. She was boxing. I don't think that this boss in particular had any skills or movesets that, that, that made it difficult, but thematically, the boss was pretty amazing, especially the lore that's behind the boss as well, basically being, uh, the daughter of a cosmic force that's been stranded on this planet and they created the two fingers in order to get more information from the cosmic force so that they can figure out what their goal is and then you know everybody including the mother of fingers loses their way over the course of time i thought that that was pretty dope i, I really liked that about it but you know in terms of the gameplay and with the gameplay involves, I thought that she was pretty okay. You know, weak spot is the belly because the belly is basically, you know, the entry point. That's also where she creates the fingers. But for the most part, it wasn't that difficult. And again, I think my weapon was a weakness to it. And I'm saying think very loosely because I don't know. I just know I was doing big damage to it. <laughs> oh, my boy here. My boy, Medra. My favorite fight in the DLC. Hands down the best fight. The Lord of Frenzy Flame. It's been a minute since they actually gave us like a Lord of Frenzy. No, actually, I think this is the first time they gave us a Lord of Frenzy Flame to fight against. But like the Lord of Frenzy Flame has been an idea and Souls likes for a minute. At least since three. Cause I remember there was like an ending where you could get like something dealing with madness or maybe I'm off, maybe I'm off. I, I could be way off, but yeah, this is, this is amazing, bro. Like from, granted the way it starts is a little meh, little meh, but the fight in itself is, 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 is pretty cool once he actually transformed and his different attacks from the giant explosion that he does that's kind of similar to the scarlet blossom except it doesn't have a lingering effect which they could have easily made the arena linger madness for a good period of time but they didn't i respect you for that because that would have been a cop out um and on top of that the sword in itself oh that joint is nice and uh, uh, the attack patterns the cadence the way the character moves in itself like how the fire head just stays stationary while the body underneath it is just turning like it's a dreidel or a spin top, man. Like, it's just a, it's just a, thematically, it's a great fight. And then the mechanics of it makes the fight even better because it has that dance element to it, figuring out the different patterns and the dodges. Then when, when you counter attack, after you get your counter attack, how to get in on his attack and doing jump charge attacks on him so that you could duck some of his swings as he's swinging and then it allows you to get your recovery frame so that you could then do your roll after he gets the swing that can actually hit you i swear to god this fight is amazing bro <laughs> it's just too good i wish they had more fights in the dlc like this but really it was only him and mesmer that kind of had like like that level of detail to the fight like thinking about the player and what the player might do and how the player could like utilize those things to their advantage you know what i mean i thought that was pretty dope uh the petulant oh no the uh putrescent night my bad i feel like this one was a dance and it, it heavily reminded me of like orphan of cause if he didn't have legs like a lot now, granted, I know Orphan of Cause, like, he was kind of, you know, <laughs> slamming everything <laughs> on the ground, making wild noises and all that. But the design, it, it gave me, like, some Orphan of Cause vibes. Uh, the weapon that he uses reminded me of the shrimp. And, you know, a bunch of other. I'm just going to say this. George R.R. R. Martin did write it. 
And I'm also going to say this, if you look at the story of Elden Ring, especially if you look at how each individual became a god, in particular, America, America married Godfrey, had three kids, then married Radagon, had three kids. Radagon then split off from uh, uh, America, then married Ranala, had three kids. I'm just saying, to be a god, you got to marry bro <laughs> the, the, the story is telling you that in itself so in this particular case you know Mikola you know, might want to be with the brother you know you know might play with the fellas so <laughs> with that said uh radar pro uh console to Mikola I didn't think that it was a tough boss fight I think it was more so a knowledge check and the reason why I say it's a knowledge check is everything that you learned in the DLC up until that point. Now, if you rushed through it, you went and got no shadow fragments, you didn't do anything else, and your skills is buns, you're going to be upset with yourself because it's going to call you out on you being ass. And you might not like with, with, how it's going to talk to you. But if you, you play the game, you do everything right. I feel as though it's a reward in Final Boss. Because I swear to God, everything that the game was trying to teach me the entire time, I felt as though was coming into fruition during that boss fight. And that, that goes for placement of my dodges, meaning not just randomly dodging and panic dodging, but where am I placing myself after I dodge? When I hit that, when I hit that circle button, where exactly am I moving myself? Not just moving and moving and moving and flicking and flacking. No, where where am I moving myself? And I feel like that's that was a very important thing with that boss fight. As well as understanding that some attacks have multi-hits. Where the initial hit isn't when you see it impact. The initial hit is when it comes up. So it, it was a lot of key things that I noticed about the fight that I thought was very interesting that they went that route. And to me, if I could, I would put it in goaded. Because I did, you know what, bump it. I'm going to put it in goaded. I had a blast in that fight. I had a blast learning the moves. It took me less than 40 tries to beat him. I, I think it took me, I know it took me way less to beat him than it did Sword St. Ishin. And the crazy thing is, with Sora St. Ishin, I was beating myself. With him, I didn't, I, I felt like I was beating myself a little bit, but I felt like I need to gather data. Because once I gather this data, that's going to be your butt. And it turned out to be the case. Uh, So, oh, the bear. The bear was all right. It was you know, a standard bear fight. Red bear was all right. Red bear wasn't really anything too significant. I don't even think he landed in an attack on me. Mm. I'm gonna put Renala at the top. I kind of wanna, or Reliana. I kind of wanna, uh, Relana. I kind of wanna put her in goaded, but I got three there already. I I do, cause I really like her fight. Her fight reminded me so much of the dance of the Boar Real Valley from Dark Souls Three. I know a lot of people at the time when they was playing, they were saying, oh my God, she moves like Melania. And I was like, no, the fuck she don't. <laughs> I mean, I get it. Like she does the whole little, oh, I'm a dash back and dash behind you like type of deal. It was like, all right, well, cool, I guess. But most of her attack set is heavily reminiscent of that of the dance of the Boreal Valley from Dark Souls 3. I thought that was pretty cool. I thought that was a nice callback to that game. Um, and so, ooh, and I really like her combat, her combo scheme, how she enters the different phases of her fight. Like when she enters the second phase, uh, the second phase of her fight, she pretty much throws down two light swords or, you know, the one, uh, downward slash and then the horizontal slash that's her entering her second phase and then the third phase is her lightening up the the, the the twin swords the fire and moon sword 
and then the the fourth phase is her dropping uh dropping the moons on you i thought that was pretty dope her fight is amazing i'm gonna come back to it i'm gonna come back to it uh romina the twin buds actually i really liked her bo boss fight too i really liked her boss fight her boss fight was uh pretty fun um i thought that was a great use of the scarlet rock especially with not having it be something that entirely lingers across the battlefield but something that kind of ticks and then go away you know what i mean uh her sword attacks i thought was pretty cool had incredible tales with the wind-ups of it uh her attacks where she plunges at the ground kind of similar to uh the scarlet blossom i thought that was pretty dope it was it was it definitely leaves you with a big opening for attacks and on top of that like the fight in itself can be made significantly easy if you just keep yourself on the inside as long as you stay on the inside the centipede dudes they can't get you and at that point it's your fight because now you on her cheeks and you clapping them i thought it was a pretty cool fight uh red bear red bear was all right red bear was all right uh scatter tree i thought was all right i didn't think the scatter tree was like anything spectacular i think the only reason why i think that is because of how fast i beat it maybe i didn't see all of the move sets but the fact that I had to fight the boss like three different times, I just, I don't know. I wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling it. Like, die. <laughs> die, Bama. Die. Uh, Tree Sentinels. I'll put that boxing. Just because, you know, in the actual game, I would put Tree Sentinels at boxing. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, I'm putting them where it should be. Uh, Chaza, yeah. And as for jury, Elder Inquisitor. I don't know. There. My bad. I accidentally put that in these work. Um, where would I put jury? I put jury at the top. All right. Wasn't really anything spectacular. Um, it was just a summoner and the summoner was easily taken down after like a few swings so it, it wasn't it wasn't really anything too bad um as for the list this is the complete list for right now now if i go in right and i'm really really looking at it right i'm trying to think to myself if i like the radon fight more than i like the red Miana fight and i think i like them both equally so i should put them both on the same i'm putting them both on the same let me know what you all think down in the comment section below. What were your favorite fights of the Shadow of Eritrea DLC? And what were some of the ones that you could have done without? You know? Until next time, y'all all take care. Deuces.